In our headlines, the head of the IRS warns that if Congress fails to reset the alternative minimum tax, there could be a delayed start to 2013's tax season. In programming its systems, the IRS assumed Congress would patch the AMT, as lawmakers have done for so many years. Without another patch, the AMT could hit as many as 33 million people for the 2012 tax year, and it will take them some time to reset all of those forms. And Squawk is in session uh, this morning with Congressman Peter Roskam, Chief Deputy Whip and a member of the Ways and Means Committee. Congressman, great to see you. Thanks Thank for you. joining Good us. Thank you. Good to be here. Uh, one, of, uh, one of your quotes that, that I like is that House Republicans are prepared to get the yes, but uh, they're not prepared to get to foolish. Um, and um, 1.6, I guess you would think, is foolish. 800, I, I guess uh, people think maybe that's uh, doable. Could it just look like this? And I'm going to just cut to the chase. We go up. We start at 500. Uh, 1,000 and above. We go up two percentage points to 37, uh, and then we do a couple of things on, on deductions that are politically possible to do to get to a trillion dollars. If the president were to, to come down to a trillion, could we go up, would do Republicans go up to a trillion? Okay, I'll give you a straight answer, but I'll give you a straight answer in a minute. Let me, let me get to the big <laughs> concern that, that sort of animates that. The entire conversation since the election has been litigating one quarter of the president's own architecture. That is, all we're talking about is revenues, revenues, revenues. Mm. The White House has been absolutely silent on 75% of their own described remedy, and that is, where are the cuts? Now, Secretary Geithner comes to Capitol Hill and with a straight face says, we need to spend more money, we need more stimulus spending. Look, I come from the state of Illinois, which is an example of what not to do. The state had the same underlying problems, that is, um, runaway spending problems, and they did, they, they came up with the wrong solution. Raise taxes, don't deal with the underlying problems, chase an entrepreneurial class out, seven billion dollars in current unpaid bills, more per capita debt than any state in the union, and a higher average unemployment rate. It is a, it is a system for failure. So what's happening with my neighbors in Illinois? They're saying all of a sudden, and these are the people that are minding their own business, not paying attention to all this stuff all the time. All of a sudden they're looking up and they're saying, why is it more expensive for my child to go to the University of Illinois than it is to go to Indiana University. Why can't my kid get into a state school? You know what I mean? All of these things, which is the ripple effect of what? Bad policy. And it is denial behavior. And I think the, the president's problem right now, he's overselling. He's overselling this the revenue side, and he's creating the impression that, hey, just you pay a little bit more taxes, and I might mean you pay a little bit more taxes, and all of a sudden the you stars know, you, are going to be brighter. You remember that, and old, uh, that old saying, uh, you know, change what you can, uh, don't change what you can, or God, you know, at, at least accept the things that you're unable to change. You're not going to be able to change, that, that I don't think, the president on, on what you just described. Okay, so, so where, what, where, what can Republicans do to get to an agreement where we go over the fiscal cliff? Or I, Steve did this interview with Geithner the other day, and I don't know whether he slipped or whether they, it was intentional. I don't know whether they want to go over the cliff, but they're ready. To go over the cliff. Okay, so they're poised for Operation Geronimo, right? Just just go right over. Well, there's no celebration in that. I mean, that's that's I'm not, not a wise. There is, but they yeah. are prepared for that. Oh, okay, so, so I, I, do do we want to avert it? Or we do, want to avert it. I've described going over the cliff as a bucket of crazy. But by the same token, you've got to acknowledge. Look, the pa the best indicator of future behavior is past behavior. Well, then we're president. No, look, President screwed. Obama twice before has made declarative statements about what he's not willing to do. And frankly, all we've heard from the White House is what they're not willing to do. So the president has signed the extension of these rates in the past. I think the underreported story in all of this drama are Senate Democrats that are wringing their hands and avoiding eye contact and worried about that, where that it is. That passed in the Senate. McConnell would have brought it up not just as an amendment. He said, I'll do it straight. And Harry Reese said, oh, well, I don't Yeah, we're too busy today. Yeah, right. right forget it. So, so they can't pass it in their own house. Right, they, they can't in, pass it in their own house. So here's the question. I think the operative question is, does this administration really want to take us to $22 trillion? Is that really where they want to go, $22 trillion in debt? Because that's the pathway. And if they do, aren't we better to deal with this right now? This doesn't get any better the longer we wait. And the president has been overselling. And when you have the Speaker of the House the day after the election coming out and saying, look, 
We're willing to move. Our movement is to put revenues on the table. Remember, during but the wait a second, are you saying a bucket of crazy is better than the long-term implications? I'm just well, so this. that's the Hobson's choice, right? right? And that's what the country is is dealing with. Neither of them are things that you want to embrace because they're both miserable. But I would I would argue, based on experience in Illinois. Through manipulations and a lot of razzle dazzle, Illinois is in a very bad place. The president right comes from that state too. Right. So that even suggests further that is his world view, right? His whole base. What has the city of Chicago been doing over the past several years? Not dealing with underlying well, spending problems. Ron Emanuel took problems. on the teachers union this this past summer. Okay, he got rolled, and they they've been selling assets. It's been asset sales. It's been parking contracts. It's been selling the Skyway, not dealing with the underlying spending problems. And so House Republicans are determined to deal with this debt question. And so when Boehner comes to the comes out and gives his talk right after the election. But, but honestly, I mean, the administration has, ca has has criticized the Republican proposal because there are no specifics in the spending cuts. Oh, come on. Look, the <laughs> Erskine Bowles no, language is they are. No, the Erskine Erskine Bowles language. You know how this works. House you, Republicans are no, I'm not going to play that game and here's why. But you're just House Republicans my point. No, no, no. I'm happy to Let me finish your sentence. My point. So House Republicans are willing to sit down. They're not any more anxious to deal with these cuts and to pass these cuts than anybody else is. But we've demonstrated through the Ryan budget. We did it once. We did it uh, twice. Uh, you know what? I will we give you that point because the one thing I would like is if everybody would stop talking about this in public and get behind closed doors and actually make this happen. I, I can't believe the amount of, of talk that is happening and the tough talk. The, we'll go over the cliff. We'll go over the cliff. We'll go over the cliff. I don't think that's how well, let me just ask you one question. Is, is this that's really the point. The point is, we have, I like to call it, it's a fiscal speed bump. This is a small thing. It's basically a 600 billion patch that we need. The real, the real thing we're headed for is, uh, is the long-term progress that we have to make. Now, I'm really concerned that the atmosphere is very poisoned as we try to deal with the 600 billion problem when we have a multi-trillion dollar problem. And that's really where you want your efforts placed. So why are you burning up all of this energy by the end of the year to solve the cliff problem and people are folding in some longer term, you know, fixes, right, that you can't agree with. You're never going to agree by the end of the year on them. Why don't you just agree to put this off? Why don't you put this off into next year and solve all of it in the context of, of a real multi-trillion dollar uh, renegotiation on what the long-term fiscal situation looks like? Mm -hmm. Doesn't that make a lot more sense than you'd have to extend on one the high end tax. You would have had to elect Romney to do that. that you're not going to get through. You're not going to extend the Bush tax cuts for the high end. For another you know? minute. For not, no, even not even for another even minute. For a millisecond. But, but I think this is the problem because I mean, Republicans. The Republicans really want to want to bargain away and let taxes go up by the end of the year. Only have to have the big negotiations occur next year, where the president's going to want even more increases in taxes. Okay, let me let me ask a different question, and it's sort of the, the now we gotta framing go. it at the same time. Okay, here's an opportunity for the president to eclipse the whole scene. I don't think he's going to, but he could eclipse the whole scene. And let's not relitigate 01 and 03. Instead, let's bridge to tax reform and move forward. I'm telling you, Senate Democrats that aren't answering their phones are the ones to be asking about this right now. Mm.